Hi, everyone. We're going to give uh, a few minutes to let people start to roll in uh, before we get started. Hope you all are having a wonderful Friday and thank you for joining us. All right, I think we can get started. Um, so welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our virtual Ask Me Anything with Luminary Labs Design Manager, Winnie Chang. And for those of you who may not know, we are a strategy and innovation consultancy based in New York City. My name is Naomi Nike. I'm a senior communications associate at Luminary Labs. And today Winnie will be answering frequently asked questions about the design and insights team from how we define design within innovation, how Luminary Labs designers col uh, collaborate with other teams, and what she enjoys most about her work at LO. So a few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, this will be recorded and available to watch after this week. There is a Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom window that you can use to submit your questions at any time. We'll try our best to answer as many questions as we can, and we will be starting with the questions that were submitted through the registration form. And at any time, you can learn more about our work and explore uh, current opportunities at Luminary Labs by going to luminary-labs.com. So Winnie, I'm so thrilled to be in conversation with you today. Do you mind introducing yourself to those in our audience who may not know you? Of course. Thanks a lot, Naomi, for the introduction. So hello, everyone. My name is Winnie. I'm the design manager here at Luminary Labs. I lead our design and insights team, which oversees strategic design activities, sets best practices, and we work across all of the different teams and projects here at Luminary Labs. So that's anything from you know, infrastructure, future of work and education, uh, future of health, scientific discovery, uh, really supporting those teams, you know, in any stage of the projects that they're participating in. So really excited to be here to answer some questions. Amazing. Um, so probably would love to start out with what initially brought you to Luminary Labs. Yeah, of course. So I've actually been at Luminary Labs for about 10 months now. And uh, previously, I led the design team at UNICEF's Office of Innovation. So that's where I was working at the intersection of emerging tech and the needs of the most vulnerable children and young people. So after a couple of years there for my next role, something that I was looking at was a place that really understood, you know, what's the strategic role that design plays within the innovation process and within an organization. Um, and also opportunities for learning, for professional development, for professional practice. Um, and because of my background, I really wanted to work on projects that matter. So subject areas, clients, um, the kind of challenges that we would be working with clients to um, find solutions for, that was something that was really interesting to me because a lot of my work focuses on how do we shape desirable futures, right? So how do we make sure that whatever we come out with has the impact that we want it to have in, you know, small scale and large. And where did you, or how did you get your um, start in design to begin with? Yeah. So I actually started out in graphic design. I grew up in Canada. So I went to a joint program between York University and Sheridan College. And I worked at a really great boutique design firm called Philip Sung Design. That's where I really, you know, honed my skills in branding and execution, um, really learning, you know, the ins and outs of what professional practice means in that space. And what I found was that I really enjoyed the work, but something that I was really interested in looking more into was the pro bono aspect of things. So all of the work that didn't really make us a lot of money, um, it sparked an interest and a curiosity in how can I grow my practice from designing things or designing, you know, like reports or websites to actually focusing a bit more on designing better relationships between people. 
So because of that, I ended up going to Parsons School of Design. I did a master's in transdisciplinary design there. And that kind of led me into my current trajectory of looking at, you know, what's the intersection of human needs and business opportunities and what are the spaces that as a designer can uh, transverse in order to get there. I feel like so many of the things that you initially drew you to a lot of these other opportunities are things that you do almost every day at Luminary Labs. So what would you say is one of your favorite things um, or your truly main favorite thing about working at LL? Yeah, I'd say one of the things that, you know, I, I think about almost every day at this point is uh, the collaborative nature of our work. So we're designing programs that are supposed to be innovative or working on projects that are supposed to push boundaries, move the needle, um, achieve results. Um, we're working towards equity and whatnot. Um, the kinds of people that we have here, the fact that it's so multidisciplinary, people come from all different backgrounds. Um, you know, some of the people who have a strategic role, like they have a design background, people in comms used to work, you know, in a different capacity. Um, and we cross pollinate a lot, we share ideas, and we have the opportunity to both teach and to learn from other people here. So I'd say, especially from a design perspective, like that's really helpful. And it means that you're able to grow in many different ways. I love that answer. And I feel like that's also one of the things that I love about our work at Luminary Labs. Um, so now pivoting a little bit, we got many questions about the design and insights team. Um, so that may be um, something that a lot of people are trying to understand, you know, how does a design team work within consulting? So do you mind giving a little bit of background on what kind of work um, does the design and insights team do and how does design fit into uh, Luminary Labs consulting work? Yeah, of course. So it does depend on the scope of the project, but we can get involved at multiple points in that life cycle. So it can be anywhere from problem framing and design research, really trying to get to the root cause of, you know, what is the problem we're trying to solve here, um, to facilitating workshops and helping with decision making, looking at different artifacts that we can create to shape that process. Um, and then it can also lead to prototyping and actually working on high fidelity design outputs. So like once some decisions have been made, like we need to make something a reality. So how do we launch that? How do we gain momentum? How do we get excitement behind something? So that could be, you know, developing visual identity systems and you're working with the communications team and content and community team to work on like the storytelling aspect. But you can see that it can involve, you know, like design spans across a project's life cycle. And so depending on the scope of the project and what, you know, who needs to get involved in this process, we may enter at different points. There's also some projects, you know, could be like a service design or product service pairing, where we're the ones who are kind of leading that engagement. So I'd say that because of the nature of our work, we're working within strategy, within innovation. Um, that's something that we could wear a lot of hats. We're quite multidisciplinary. And so that kind of flexibility to move across is really important. Yeah, that's a really great point. Um, so again, we do so much different, we work with so many different clients. We have a variety of different types of projects that we take on. So maybe if you could give a little bit of background on what does a typical day look like for you, for people who may be interested in our design work? Yeah, of course. And uh, I'd say because of the different kinds of uh, roles and responsibilities or kind of tasks that we're going to be doing every day, that could look really different. So maybe I'll wrap this into maybe what our schedule could look like as a team as well. So I would say that, you know, we are a hybrid team. Every day is different, but typically we sync up on Tuesdays and Wednesdays in the office where we'll have a team gather. So someone from the team will do a presentation on a project they recently finished or something they learned. They might want to do a fun activity to break the ice. Um, so that's something where we can get together. We get to know one another. We learn about each other's work. And then the rest of that day, you know, we could have um, project meetings, we could have collaboration sessions, um, we could make decisions, have coffee chats. And then maybe on a Thursday, when we all have synchronous heads down time, that's when we could do our actual heads down work. So that could be we're developing an interview guide for a design research project. It could be that we're working with a team on the visual identity for an upcoming initiative we're about to launch. 
Uh, we could be proofing a website. Um, we could be having a discussion with an internal team about some thought leadership work that's coming up. Um, or we could be planning a visioning session for cross-cutting team members. So all of those are activities that could happen. Um, they happen at different points, different times, different amounts. Um, but that's just like a, a menu of things that could happen over that typical day or two days. <laughs> Very true. Always so busy, the DNI team. Mm -hmm. Um, so at Luminary Labs, our design is also multidisciplinary. So um, do you mind sharing some examples that you found particularly exciting, maybe, you know, in the last few months or in the past year? Yeah, I'd say um, maybe there's like three different projects we can talk about. And all of these are collaborative efforts, right? So the design and insights team is one of the teams that's working on these projects, but, you know, communications, content and community, um, the strategy teams that are leading these engagements all play a really integral role. So these are all projects that kind of everyone here has been involved in. Um, so one example is that we launched the Future Finder Challenge. That's about understanding um, the needs of adult learners. We had to develop a challenge identity system, looking at how do we actually reach the people that we want to actually participate, and also how do we make sure that these materials are accessible. These are for adult learners, what kinds of needs do they have, how do we center them in this process. Um, another is that we worked on, you know, a website and a virtual accelerator for Mission Daybreak, the branding as well. Um, we had to think through how do we plan like a live demo day experience um, in another city. So that's another thing that could happen. And something that I was really excited about as well is we are working on a project around the future of education. So that's for like a large foundation. Um, we're conducting research with learners and families and educators. We're supporting it through, um, you know, co-creation, um, looking at strategic foresight, applying um, scenario building. And it's really to understand where do you need to say like invest in so that you can um, create the kind of futures that you're you're looking for when it comes to education and for like the future um, that's coming up. Like, is that the future we want, we want to have and how do we get there? That's a really great point. So speaking of the future, um, the DNI team is small but growing. So how would you say someone joining the team could influence how the team evolves? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And now is really a great opportunity to join the team. Um, it's a great opportunity to shape our practice at the moment. So something that we wanna talk about with the Design and Insights team, um, we're in the process of visioning for the next year. We're setting goals. We're trying to understand really how can design and insights play an integral role, you know, to a higher degree than it has in the past. And, you know, it's already integrated into the way that we do things here. And so what's the next level? How do we make sure that we continue to build that capacity uh, for design practice, even if it's by people in the team who don't consider themselves to be designers, right? So in the future, we want to make sure that we can manage some sort of community of practice. We can build assets, build, you know, tools, uh, create an ecosystem of learning where everyone can kind of contribute to that and help shape with that. Um, is there a way that Design and Insights can be a center of excellence and whoever joins the team, what are they really excited about? Like what things would they want to lead on? Would they be interested in bringing to the table to make sure that we can, you know, all around be able to support moving our practice forward. Because here at Luminary Labs, you know, we we do think that design is an integral part, right? It's, it's not optional. It's something that's baked into our DNA. It's present in the va values and, you know, the, the principles that we have here. You know, we we always make sure like we consider, um, consider every decision that we make, um, that they're bold and they're brave, that we're thoughtful, you know, things like that, which, I think that's a very design, you know, it's a design forward mindset. It's a humans, human mindset. And that's something that Luminary Labs in general tries to move forward with. Thanks for sharing that. So also speaking of the future, um, there's so much going on, I think, every day in multiple industries that we work across um, and especially in design 
Um, there are so many different trends in 2023. So how do you personally stay on top of, you know, these cutting edge, innovative ideas when it comes to design trends? Yeah, I'd say like there's a multi-pronged approach with the way that we approach design here. Uh, it's also not just my responsibility to kind of be on top of that. So I think that's really helpful. The fact that everyone else in the team, you know, is also uh, surveying the land and seeing what signals are popping up and what can we find relevant that we're going to bring into our own work. And we can see that uh, in our other portfolios of work. So something that's happened recently is that, you know, across several of our engagements, you know, with the private sector and public sector as well, some of our foundation clients, is that there's a lot of design terms, or there could be a lot of design approaches that are being repeated, you know, whether they're coming from healthcare, whether it's coming from scientific discovery, whether it's like through an education project. And something that we found is that, yes, it's important to stay on top of things, but it's not necessarily effective unless you bring others along with you in the process and that everyone kind of has that shared vocabulary, right? So we can talk about the cutting edge stuff, but if people don't understand on a baseline, you know, what is, I don't know, service design, what is the kind of frameworks that we're trying to use? What is, what do we mean by accessibility? Those are all things that we kind of need to uh, make sure everyone has that that same language before we can move forward and so that we can bring everyone along with us in the process to have the impact that we want to have. So you can implement those cutting edge techniques. You can find those uh, design research products. You can subscribe to those platforms, but unless they're actually helping meet a real need, it might be something that we can skip for now, right? Focus our energies elsewhere. But in addition to that, you know, we do the professional development. Um, I attended several conferences, really like following journals, those sorts of things. So a lot of opportunities. Um, always really excited to learn new things here. And um, Jessica shared a wonderful resource that Winnie and the rest of the LL team curated um, earlier this year. So um, it's a short glossary of design related terms um, for 2023, a really, really helpful um, resource, even if you don't necessarily work in design, because as you've seen, design touches so many uh, different aspects of our work, even if you're not a designer, um, but definitely feel free to check it out uh, in your free time. And um, a lot of our questions actually that are coming in are regarding culture and collaboration. So I'm actually going to ask Jessica to join us because um, I think she'll be able to share a lot of great uh, insight on her work as head of content community as well. And there she is. Um, so Jessica, if you don't mind introducing yourself um, to our wonderful audience members. Sure, I'm Jessica Hibbard. I'm head of content and community, which is a separate function from design and insights, but Winnie and I work very closely together on a lot of things and have like complementary responsibilities on our both our internal projects and our client projects. So um, very happy to chat with you and be here. Thanks, Jessica. Um, so one of our first questions um, around collaboration was someone saying a consulting firm is very different from working for an agency or design studio. So what's the dynamic like at LL? Winnie, do you want to start? And <laughs> Yeah, of course. I mean, I've worked in a design studio where you're only working with designers. Um, I've also worked in places where designers are not the majority. Um, so you kind of have to be that advocate. So in a consulting firm, I think it also depends on the maturity of that organization, right? So is it somewhere that leads with design and they think that it's really important to every decision um, that you need to center the audiences, center the users, center certain actors? Um, or is it a place where kind of business needs are at the forefront? Um, I think the optimal is actually a, a sweet spot where those like, you know, there's a business business need intersects with the kind of human needs and the real impact you want to create. Um, so I'd say a consulting firm like Luminary Labs is at that sweet spot. Um, but 
yeah, that's that's probably my my answer to that. Jessica, anything else to add? Because secretly, Jessica also has a design background. So just going to put that out there. Yeah, I usually don't advertise that because that was a very, very long time ago. Um, I yeah, I, I did have a little bit of design experience in an agency setting um, in particular very early in my career. And, you know, I don't know if this is the same for every agency or for every experience of design, but my experience then was that, you know, design was restricted to just the graphics for something. Um, and as a designer in that situation, you know, if a headline didn't fit the ad space, I wasn't allowed to touch the headline, you know, I wasn't allowed to do copy because that was somebody else's job. Everything was really like segmented and, and sort of narrow. So um, I'm the kind of person who likes to get my hands into everything. So being at a place like Luminary Labs has been really nice because people contribute in different areas and it's always okay to learn about other functions or to contribute ideas and other spaces and and you know that kind of thing is welcomed um yeah this is my only consulting experience luminary labs is the only consulting firm where i have worked before but um i enjoy that sort of collaborative aspect and the the opportunity to learn about what other people do and how to contribute there yeah i would agree with that the whole you know I would say that it's it's kind of permeable, right? Like you can do, you can stick to your area of expertise, but you're allowed to strive into other places. It's welcome. You can learn from other people about their practice and, and what they do. Like sometimes I feel, you know, even though I'm owning the design and insights portion of things, like very often I'm striving or diving into say like the communications part or we're looking at storytelling or even on the strategy side like I'm dipping into that that area and I think especially since Luminary Labs as a consulting firm we're quite small or quite agile and so there's that permission that you're able to do those things right it's it's welcome to kind of support each other in those those respects. So our next question is, uh, I think you guys touched a little bit on this, um, but maybe for our audience being able to talk about some examples of how the team has worked together in the past or how even DNI and content community and also the communications team has worked together on the uh, recent months. Yeah, I mean, Jessica, how do we work together? Naomi, how do we work together? <laughs> Well, I'm laughing because we have been spending a lot, the three of us have been spending a lot of time together recently working on a report. Um, and that has been a like cross-function collaboration between strategy, communications, DNI, um, CNC. So um, yeah, I'm just like kind of chuckling to myself that that has been top of mind for me, but um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I feel like our collaboration feels a bit seamless at times. Like we're always kind of, we're, we talk every day, we're going back and forth on things. And sometimes it's very task oriented of like, we need to revise this. We need to share this. We need to like figure something out, but sometimes it is much more like conceptual or exploratory. Like we're trying, we're like sharing ideas and figuring out what's next or thinking about the future together. So I guess it could take different forms. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think collaboration is like, it's very key to what we do here. Everything that we work on, we, we try to make sure that, you know, it's, it's not a finished product when we, we present it, right. Where we're willing to share and kind of get feedback on a lot of different things. Um, we're also, I think there's a high degree of trust between our teams. So making sure that, the kind of feedback that we're giving is productive. How do you make sure like that sort of dynamic is maintained that everything that we do is for, you know, creating a really great outcome at the end. Um, so in all in all, it's a, it seems to be like a really productive uh, process in going through that collaboration. And, um, you know, the communications team, content and community and design and insights works with every project in Luminary Labs' portfolio at the moment. So that's something that, you know, we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So those communication skills, making sure those asks are clear, that timelines are clear, that expectations are clear. I think we all understand that that's really important and we try to do that to make sure things are consistent. 
Yeah, I think that's a really valid point that you bring up, Winnie, that all three of our teams are usually, um, I would say communication, since we're a little bit larger than uh, content and community and DNI, we uh, may not, uh, one person may not be sitting on every single project, but there is a communications um, leader on each. And I think that opportunity is really great because you get the opportunity to walk, uh, work across all of our focus areas. Um, but at the same time, it is really imperative that we're having clear communication, that the expectations for each project and um, the level of um, collaboration is also very clear. Um, but as Jessica said, we have been working very closely together for the past couple of months on our variety of initiatives and different projects, um, which has been really exciting. And I think it also allows us to um, innovate and think of different ways to um, approach maybe similar problems that we've looked at in the past. And again, approaching with a new eye, whether it be to design or how we want to message particular things. I see, I don't know if Winnie was about to say something. <laughs> I was also thinking when you were talking about working across projects that I always think it's so valuable to have teams like design and insights, communications, content and community seeing all the work because it helps us bring those ideas. It helps us cross pollinate. It helps us share those best practices across teams. Maybe like one on one project, we learn that something really works well or doesn't work well. We're able to sort of share and translate and bring those things to other projects, which make, just makes collaboration smoother and more productive over time. Mm -hmm. um, also brings like good insights and a lot of value to our clients, which I think that they appreciate. I always feel good about doing that as well. Yeah. And something that we always talk about is how do we move our work from good to great? And I think that, you know, trying to take those, those key learnings or those insights from each project and the way that we do things like, you know, reflecting on our process as well is really helpful when we're starting a new initiative or we're trying to talk about, you know, why they should work with us when we're talking to potential clients. So I think also part of that learning process is also the idea of mentorship and professional development. Um, so how do you both feel that Luminary Labs is currently supporting professional development um, for your particular team? Yeah, I think that professional development is really important at Luminary Labs. Um, there's a lot of focus on, you know, what is your personal career trajectory? How does that intersect with Luminary Labs and kind of where the company is going so that we can make sure that, you know, everyone is moving forward, everyone feels that their time is valuable, that they're learning new things. Um, because one of the big things that we value here, it's one of our company values, in fact, is curiosity. So making sure that, you know, if everyone's so curious, they want to learn new things, that they have the opportunity to do that. I know that personally, when I was looking at Luminary Labs um, from, you know, a, a professional standpoint, I grilled the team and everyone who interviewed me uh, about what opportunities there were for professional development. And so that was something that I thought was really valuable. It was really important. Um, I was really happy to see that, you know, Luminary Labs had a really structured process for thinking about how someone is growing. Um, and they dedicated the time to understanding those goals how people are going to measure them, checking in to make sure that people are making progress, um, trying to, you know, do what they can to enable those things to happen. And for myself, you know, because we have that support both financially as well as, um, you know, from a mentorship standpoint, you're able to get a lot done when it comes to addressing those goals. So for example, last year I went to like a, a service design conference um, and learned a lot about, say, what are what are the discourse around service design uh, right now, and how does that bleed into professional practice? What are the things that I can bring back to the team, and then think about as we're you know working with clients on that? So that's just one example. You can also you know take courses. I took a course last year as well, so a lot's happened. There's many different opportunities. Um, Jessica, anything that you want to share or add? No, I think like Winnie, you're a great example of somebody who really embraces professional development on a personal level, right? Like you going to those conferences and taking those courses, but then also share, you shared that experience back with the team, which I think is 
a great way for us all to learn vicariously through you. So I really appreciate it when people do that. I think in general, something I find really helpful about our approach to professional development is that it happens on both like a customized individual level, but it also happens on a more collective company-wide level. So, you know, people set their annual goals, they're working toward like whatever motivates them the most and what connects with their work. Sometimes that's attending conferences and classes, and sometimes that takes other forms. Um, but we also have these collective opportunities. So recently, the entire company went through a full day uh, training on feedback, how to give feedback to each other and do that more effectively. Um, and then, you know, I top of mind for me because I just delivered the first session of it yesterday was we have a writing accelerator for everybody who joins Luminary Labs goes through it. So there are some things that we plan like around specific skill sets, areas that we all like skills that we all need to have and to practice. Um, so I just find that really helpful too, that we're all going through some of the same things together while also pursuing our own individual interests. I was really hoping that Jessica would talk about the writing accelerator because I think even though the communications team, often we're doing a lot of writing and messaging work. Um, I think the way that um, Jessica has created the writing accelerator to kind of be able to touch on the various skill sets that exist, especially when doing strategy and consulting work, I found it extremely beneficial. Um, and I think the, the other aspect of all of this is, as you've probably heard, we are working um, and collaborating on multiple different projects at various stages. So even if you are not a designer, um, Winnie often is asking us for our feedback and for our opinions and any other strategies and tactics that we want to utilize in a particular project stage. And same for communications and also with content community, uh, we're always trying to collaborate and um, get as much feedback and work with others to make sure that our work is going in the direction that we want. Um, and often that's making sure that people have, you know, at the baseline, the correct skills and um, the most amount of resources to make that possible. Yeah, and uh, I will say plus one on the writing accelerator. Um, in my experience, I uh, was participating in the writing accelerator last year when I first joined the team and during my first week. Um, and it was really helpful because uh, I had not worked with an editorial team before. I've worked with a communications team, but actually, what are the nuances of like editing a document? Um, if you wanted to write something and you're asking for feedback, what kind of feedback can you ask for and what kind of lead times does that need? So in addition to learning new skills, being able to practice writing, be able to practice storytelling and communication, it also helps us collaborate better because we can set better expectations around process and like how we do things at Luminary Labs. What's our say like house style? Um, how do we actually style the kinds of like quotes or research that we do? So making sure that again, helping with our standards, helping with socializing that across the company. So I found it very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. I'm blushing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also think we've been talking about like some of these structure very structured aspects of, you know, professional development, mentorship, learning, but a lot of it happens really informally too. I see all the time people asking either in a, a working session meeting or sometimes like going to Winnie's desk, like, hey, how do I do this? Or like, sometimes it's trying to figure out something in Figma. Sometimes it's like, how do we approach this naming and like branding conversation? So there's a lot of learning that happens spontaneously and I always really appreciate that just as much as some of the formalized um, programs for it. Yeah, and the fact that people feel comfortable enough, you know, if they don't know something that they won't be, you know, penalized for asking a question. Like we love questions. We love understanding, you know, how can we improve someone's understanding or knowledge or teach something? We actually have a lot of people who come from like education backgrounds here. Um, so I find that super helpful and it's a really, you know, we're really, I guess, giving team. Like we, we love teaching and learning at the same time. So having that, that sort of dynamic is, I find really, really nice to have. I'm not sure if Jessica was planning on sharing the story later, but I feel like a point of the inquisitiveness of LL team members is I remember when I was interviewing and when I joined LL, I was told that 
Um, we are so inquisitive to the point that we were asking a lot of questions to um, one of the people who came in to discuss our retirement benefits. Um, and he was like very surprised that we had so many questions. Um, but I think that just goes to show that we are a very curious <laughs> bunch at LL. And I think that's one of um, our great qualities and the one thing that definitely binds us all together. We can really get excited about anything, including 401k plans, which I have never experienced at any other organization. So yeah, definitely a, a unique aspect of our team. Yes. So one of our questions um, I think is really interesting, just it being like relatively still early in the year. Um, so what is a current challenge that um, either you feel that LL in general is facing or you particularly on your team are facing and that you're interested in tackling for the year to come? Ooh, interesting challenge. I think something that we're looking at, you know, we're at the beginning part of the year. So we're doing a lot of planning, we're forecasting, we're looking ahead. Something that we are really excited about developing further or making clearer is talking about, you know, what can Luminary Labs do? What are our capabilities? What makes Luminary Labs different from other organizations? And how do we highlight that? So there's a little bit of, you know, the messaging. There's a little bit of conceptually, what do we do? What kind of work in the future do we want to do? Like, what is Luminary Labs' identity from a branding perspective? Those are all things that we're thinking about as we're iterating and, you know, as we're planning, you know, what goals do we have for different teams as well? So, you know, it's a it's two sides of a coin. That's a really complex challenge to, to try to tackle, but it's really exciting, right? We're at the point where we can think about those things. Um, you know, how do we articulate the value that our three teams brings to the projects that we do? Like, what's the secret sauce? What's the magic that we can imbue into the kind of work that we do? How do we highlight the fact that, you know, our, like this is a, a women owned company, right? And is that something that we want to, to put at the forefront? So those are all things that, you know, are floating around in our brains, but it's a really exciting place to be in. Yeah, I think it's interesting, especially at this like very particular moment in time. Um, you know, we're very fortunate to have a lot of work to do um, and very like stable work environment. So in some cases it's, you know, some of the biggest challenges are, or opportunities, I guess I would say, are around scaling and growth. And, um, you know, we, we've always had sort of sustainable growth at Luminary Labs, but even when it's sustainable, sometimes, uh, you know, there's always a challenge. There's always like something new to do or figure out how to do something in a new way, um, do something more efficiently, do something better. So um, I always think about that as like a perpetual challenge, but it's also like the best challenge to have because it means that like new things are always happening and, and coming along. So um, I guess like big picture, that would be the thing for me. I feel like another aspect is us also thinking about Luminary Labs engagements post-COVID, if we want to consider 2023 post-COVID. But I think a lot of um, the ways that we were engaging with our audiences and our networks at LL um, was virtual and is currently virtual as we're <laughs> sitting at a virtual AMA. But um, I think now also a huge thing for content and community and also the communications team is um, when we're building out our various plans, whether it be for a project, for a particular client, or even for our internal work, how are we engaging with all of the people that we meet, whether it be at events or through our projects or other avenues, and how do we make sure that um, they continue to stay up to date with our work and how we also can stay up to date with what's going on in those um, particular realms of work and um, also see like where are the potent where is the potential to partner and um, kind of look into new opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if we're talking about say we're having people return to the office again, we're doing in person events as well. That's something that we haven't been doing on the team for a couple of years, right? So 
we're we're getting back to how do we think through uh, an in-person experience or like an in-person service with physical touch points, like tangible artifacts, like actual things. And how do you actually make sure that's like a seamless experience for someone who's who's encountering that and you getting to the, the sort of outcome that you're looking for? So I'd say that's a space where, you know, we're having to dedicate more time and effort to. Um, so again, it's a similar response, right? Like it's challenging, but also that's a good thing, right? It talks about, you know, we're having more of those opportunities, more of that work, we're doing well uh, in that respect. So good problem to have. Very true. So we have a few minutes left. Um, so I think with you know, recently discussing challenges, um, would love to discuss what you guys are particularly excited about the year to come. Um, as Jessica and Winnie both said, there's a lot of fun work coming up for us um, across our focus areas, across our team. So maybe one thing for each of you that you are really looking forward to going into 2023. Ooh. 2023, I'd say looking at what leadership looks like and not just for people who are in leadership positions. I know that for, for Luminary Labs, making sure that everyone has the opportunity to lead um, or the opportunity, you know, to, to be able to, to have that skill set or practice that. Um, I think that's a really important thing to have. It's an important thing to like be able to have that opportunity as well. You don't always get that at other or the organizations. Um, so I'm excited to see how that pans out, um, what we can do to support it, and how that evolves over the next couple of months. Yeah, I think that's a great one. We've been talking a lot about leadership. And so at every like at every level and every like all the different forms that it takes. So um, I find that exciting too. I think on a um, you know, sort of like work or function area side of things. I am really excited. You know, we're about to like publish a big editorial project next week, and then we'll launch into another big editorial project that will engage a lot of the company. So just like on that side of things, I'm like really excited to see how that takes shape and how to like bring others on board with that. Um, also like thinking, I'm thinking a lot, and this ties in with the leadership aspect quite a bit of like, how do be a better and more empowering coach for our team. So um, that's something that I really enjoy doing and am like excited about finding new ways to do that over the next year or so. I like the fact that at Luminary Labs, we like to demo or we like to practice or you know experiment with things, right? So almost like we are the laboratory, we're the case study that you know we can pilot it ourselves and then see like, what did we learn from that? So I'd say that's an exciting thing to do and to be able to have the space to, to try that out, whether it's coaching, whether it's like establishing for design and insights, like a community of practice around design, whether it's looking at leadership, professional development, like all very, very exciting things coming up. Well, thank you, Winnie and Jessica today for joining me. And thank you to our wonderful audience for joining us today on a Friday and spending a part of your Friday with us and sending in your amazing questions. Um, again, this recording for the AMA will be available next week um, on our YouTube channel, and you can learn more about our work and explore current opportunities at luminary-labs.com. And thank you so much. Hope you guys have a great day. Thanks a lot. Now for now.